To those of you joining us today, thank you for watching the Woburn Spotlight. I'm your host, Tyler Gates, here to bring you some positivity by talking to those in town, making big strides for the greater good. Today I'm fortunate to have with me Ken J. Simmons and Marco A. Schiavo from Simmons and Schiavo Law. How are you guys doing today? Good, thank well, you. Well, thank you. So we're here to talk a little bit about estate planning, wealth preservation, and elder law today. But before we dive into that, Marco and Ken, why don't you just highlight a little bit about you, where you're from, and what you're here to talk about today. My name is Marco Schiavo. I'm with Simmons and Schiavo. We are at the Trade Center, 400 Trade Center in Woburn, Suite 4800. Uh, we're here to talk about estate planning in general, um, a little bit of some, about some options that people have with their estate plan. Um, that's it. Ken Simmons uh, from Arlington, born, raised, uh, yeah. still there. Um, so you must like it. Yep, yeah, yeah it's, uh, <laughs> it's home, you know, and um, we've been in Woburn a couple of years now. We started off in Malden back in 2004, and um, you know, just as the practice grew and uh, client needs changed, we recently shifted over to Woburn and uh, thrilled to be there and, and uh, you know, contributing to the community. So how long have you been in the Woburn area now? Just July, over a year. And July of last year. July, just over a year and a half, yeah. We love it. That's so when I came community. into your office, you must have been actually relatively new to the location. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Okay. I didn't actually yeah. know that. Last you guys year. made it seem like you've been there 100 <laughs> years, which is great. That's fantastic. Wow. And Christine over there is very, very welcoming. And uh, mm -hmm. the whole organization as a whole is very welcoming. Oh, thank so, you. Um, so we're going to be talking again a little bit about estate planning, elder law. And uh, let, tell me a little bit about your personal backgrounds. Where did you guys go to school? You've been practicing for some time. It's been a while. <laughs> 17 years I've been practicing. I went, uh, I went to Babson College undergrad. I uh, went to Suffolk Law. Mm -hmm. um, graduated in uh, 2000. In Passive Art in 2001. Mm -hmm. I've been practicing since. Practice ever since. What about yourself, Ken? Yep. Uh, so I've been practicing. Graduated in uh, 2001. Sworn in 2002. Uh, went to UMass undergrad, Suffolk Law School, and um, yeah, been practicing with Marco pretty much from the beginning. How did you guys uh, start the partnership? Where did you guys meet? How did that conversation go? When well, did you decide to branch out? We actually we were both hired by another firm and worked together for two years. So, you know, working together, you kind of get to know strengths, weaknesses, mm -hmm. and, and uh, if something would or could be uh, a good relationship going forward. And at the time, you know, neither one of us had kids, no mortgages, uh, so it just seemed like the right time to take the chance on, you know, plant on our own two feet and, and see what would happen. Well, I'd say it worked. Yep. <laughs> I'd say it was worth the leap of <laughs> so faith. Far, right? so uh, so later, far, so good. 13 years later, yeah. I'll ask you guys in another 13 years how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's great to hear. Mm -hmm. So a little bit more about your organization, the mission, some of the, the core values that you guys have. Either you feel, like, feel free to touch upon that. Sure. Um, so estate planning, the way we view estate planning, it's very personal in nature, mm -hmm. right? So the goal, our goal is to really understand the family situation, uh, family dynamics. Uh, people have very different families, different objectives with their plan. And so the main focus is understanding what are the main issues and what are, what are people looking to do with their plan, um, not only you know, during their lifetime, uh, should they become disabled, uh, but after their death, where's, where are the assets going, where's the money going, and how are those beneficiaries receiving the money uh, for their protection, mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's our focus is to understand those family dynamics. Uh, so we spend some time in asking questions of our clients and just getting to know them as people, really. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes it's, uh, some, some of these things are not, not easy to talk about. So we make sure that we we re develop that relationship with our client, mm -hmm. all of our clients. And I think you know, with that, you know, part of the estate planning process is ultimately there's documents produced that we execute, and that becomes uh, the component of the plan. But our view of it is those are just a small piece to what the planning process is. Mm -hmm. It's learning, it's understanding, it's developing a plan that reflects someone's concerns, and then more importantly, keeping it up to date, reviewing it, uh, making sure their plan changes as their life changes or circumstances change. Um, that's a critical part of really making their planning successful. So we don't view it as a transaction. It's much more of a, a relationship-oriented process. And uh, it, it takes time and 
um, you know, we're hoping to establish those relationships and uh, make sure it's done right. From some of the testimonials that I've seen online, I can definitely say clients are happy, <laughs> which goes a long way. Mm -hmm. That does go a long way, especially in the industry that you're in. It's a very service-based industry, client-facing industry. Mm -hmm. So word of mouth can either be great or bad. Yep. And in Agreed. your case, it seems like it's going quite well over there. And we yeah. work hard at work hard. that goal. We Good. don't do much advertising. Most of our clients come by word of mouth. So Okay. It's Fantastic. Fantastic. Know that we're servicing our clients and, the, and that they're satisfied um, and delighted with our services and they're sending their friends and family over to us. So we appreciate that very much. Right on the 95, 93 belt, really, essentially. You guys seeing people coming in from all areas of the state. What is your geographic footprint typically? Um, we get people from you know, all areas, but I think the majority probably come from you know, this area, Woburn, Arlington, Winchester, Lexington, okay. Reading, Tewksbury, uh, our locations easily accessible to those surrounding towns. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll also travel. You know, we'll, we have plenty of clients down on the South Shore. Um, you know, we'll, we'll schedule appointments to just go to the home and, oh, really? and try to make the location not be an obstacle for people. Okay, so accommodate it if you can. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I live in Walpole, so okay. I have some clients in that area, Walpole and Norwood and areas there. So I, I will go to their home, typically. And, uh, and I'm sure that's a huge asset and benefit for some of these people, mm -hmm. uh, especially depending on what stage of their planning they're in. Sometimes it's, it's needed. Yeah, it's sometimes it might be. Yeah, it might be really something you need very urgently, mm -hmm. or just time and place they need it now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. wow. So with the planning, you said something before that caught caught my attention. You said something you need to review yearly. Mm -hmm. What is a typical review? Say somebody works with you or works with an estate planning attorney. What kind of review should they be doing each year? I think there's probably a minimal threshold you have to start with. Okay. It could be you know, a, a phone call just to check in. Did anything change? Has anything occurred? Um, so that's a common mm -hmm. sort of automatic thing we want to be doing. More importantly, on a new plan, we want to review if they've done a trust. Um, have they retitled their assets properly? Have they followed through with some of the steps that are needed afterwards. Okay. So very often the first review can be more involved mm -hmm. because it's really a, a double check on the steps we, we went through. Okay. Um, after that it can become a little more straightforward in the sense of you know, a phone call, half hour phone call. Um, but if needed then you know, we'd rather sit down and spend an hour going through everything and answering questions. So mm -hmm. we kind of uh, leave it up to the client in terms of their needs. Uh, if there's something in particular, mm -hmm. but at a minimum we want to have a conversation and just go through a few key points. So you're setting yes. an expectation early on that you're going to be having that short yes. right from the beginning. Yeah. Life changes. Life changes for everyone. Mm -hmm. and so we need to make sure that the, the plan reflects those changes. So we absolutely have to meet with our clients at, at least once a year. We have to at least touch base with them and say, has anything changed? Uh, what are your concerns? Has, is there any, has there been a change? Um, and especially if, as time goes on, so what we may ha do a plan right now that addresses um, post-death, later in life they may want to address long-term care. Mm -hmm. They want to protect our assets for long-term yeah. care. So the plan has to change. Mm -hmm. so, Certainly. We, so that's why we stay in touch with people and we make sure that we follow up. And to put you on the spot a little bit, um, you say life transitions. That might mm -hmm. mean something different to me than the next person. Uh, do you mind elaborating just briefly on what some of those transitions may be, those triggering events that say, hey, look at your plan again. This is the time. Yeah, I think there's, there's some real quick big ones. Mm -hmm. Buying a home, having children, um, illness is probably a, a major uh, factor for people. Um, retirement, another major one. Death of a spouse. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, those are, I think, you know, major life events that cause a shift in, in goals and needs and, and concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, shifting of priorities, all of those can trigger that. And I think that's a, a, a critical point to review things. I, I, yeah, I didn't even think that, but it might not be just an event, right? Your mm -hmm. priorities could just shift. Mm -hmm. Something may become more important to you now than it was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. right. and you won't know that unless you revisit it, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Or you're, or you're not addressing it with what you did before. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking about it and you have this concern, but everything else is lagging behind taking care of that concern. Mm -hmm. I had one situation recently where 
a parent had a plan, uh, the parents had a plan going, everything was being split among the children. But one of the children decided to buy a home. And so they said, well, rather than give you these assets after we die, we're going to give you some money now. So they changed their plan. They said, we've provided for this child during our lifetime. Now we're providing for the other child after our death. Yeah. It's the, really the child's priority that sparked the change. Exactly. Of wanting a home and right. the parents being able to have the means to do it mm -hmm. in their lifetime. Right. It's a case-by-case -case basis, right? right? It's, uh, that's why you guys sit down and do what you do. That's right. why we have to change the plan. <laughs> you meet people where they are, and that may be something different a year, 10 years down the road. Exactly. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So do you, got, you guys have provided in the past workshops, seminars. Um, do you mind just elaborating on things you might have done in the past and maybe we'll see in the future? Sure. Um, I've done a lot with senior centers, mm -hmm. um, just trying to engage people and help them understand the roadmap mm -hmm. with long-term care planning, in particular the rules surrounding Medicaid, you know, nursing homes, um, the benefits, powers of attorney, and health care proxies and how critical those things are. Mm -hmm. So we've done quite a few of those just trying to get the information out there because I think people get into traps of uh, hearing things from friends or family and just accepting it as true and it might have been at one point, but mm -hmm. you know, the law changes, the rules change. So in an effort to get that information out, we've done uh, quite a few of those mm -hmm. uh, over time. Uh, we still do them. Uh, don't have any pending, but we do um, still try to engage. So if, out of curiosity, if somebody sees this today and they're like, I want to bring these guys in to do a workshop or mm -hmm. presentation, whether it be a senior center in town, um, uh, any of the assisted living mm -hmm. uh, places, is that something you guys would be willing to volunteer your time and still go out oh, and yeah, do and be part absolutely. of the community? Yep. Okay. Um, yep. We'll throw the number up on the screen there for you guys in your office. Uh, but you guys, uh, one of you want to share it right now while we're on the air and we'll make sure to get it up there for people if they want to reach out to you? Sure. sure. So it's 400 Trade Center, mm -hmm. Suite 4800 mm -hmm. in Woburn. Mm -hmm. uh, phone, phone number is 781-397-1700. Okay. Fantastic. And there's two partners in the firm, both mm -hmm. of yourselves, yes. Christine and uh, another uh, assistant that you said you just brought on recently. Yes, Marisol. Yes. Uh, wonderful. So it's a r relatively small shop. Yeah. You're going to get you, right? Yeah, you're going to get a call yeah, back. Exactly. Absolutely. If you're in an appointment, you're going to get a call back mm -hmm. relatively quick. Yep. Um, so what areas do you focus on? Well, I've touched on it, but I want to hear it from you guys. Let's, let's dive into a little bit of the nitty gritty about what you do. Okay. Sure. Right. So I do estate planning and elder law. Uh, on the elder law side, it's planning for care needs, so whether it's um, setting up an irrevocable trust or reviewing how assets are structured and evaluating that against the cost of care. How is someone going to do it? Okay. Um, if a spouse fell ill, is their surviving spouse going to have enough to provide for themselves and have the spouse be cared for? So that's a big area of my practice mm -hmm. in the planning side. Uh, also doing Medicaid applications for people that are entering a long-term care facility and may need mass health to help pay for that cost. Okay. Um, and then on the estate planning side, the majority of my work is trust-oriented. Mm -hmm. um, people that are concerned about estate taxes or managing wealth for the next generation because they're concerned about you know, the children's spending habits or children's spouses, things of that nature, um, the trust planning is a good vehicle to deal with those concerns for the client. Mm -hmm. We also do probate administration too. So for people who have not done trust or have not funded them properly, uh, we have clients who come to us uh, and it's uh, the family member has just passed away and they say, well, these assets were in their individual name and so we will do a, a probate administration as well. Okay. And do you mind elaborating on that and what, what that entails? out of curiosity what a probate administration or what the steps might be for you to be able to help that individual? Sure. Uh, we petition, assist, assist them in petitioning the court okay. uh, for the probate itself to be appointed as a personal representative. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll we'll uh, review the will and, and uh, attach the will to that petition as well. Uh, and we'll just take them through the process uh, and that involves sometimes you know, gathering the different assets uh, once they're appointed, perhaps selling a home that they may have. Uh, but I, our, our focus really is, is, although we do probate administration, uh, our focus is really the estate planning and the Medi Medicaid planning because we understand, because we do the probate administration, we know how difficult it can be 
Uh, it's, it's time, it's money, it's the headache for the family. We're really focusing our estate plan around uh, trying to avoid all of that and making it, having a simple, easy transition of control uh, between one family member to another or to a trustee, a person that, that is in charge of that trust, administering that trust, and avoiding the court altogether. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I think of when you say that, uh, in, by doing this preemptively, is peace of mind. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that goes a long ways for people, knowing that they're taken care of, their beneficiaries are taken care of, and their heirs uh, behind them are taken care of. Well, and that's the, one of the ideas behind the review, yeah. is we could work something out now, and you could be comfortable that, okay, I took care of it, but it's not doing much good if, if things have changed and five years from now something happens. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you can really have the peace of mind unless you've kept things up to date mm -hmm. and, okay. and maintained properly in order to, to carry that forward. Excellent. And so the big question, doesn't matter what industry you're in, but what makes you different? There's other estate planning firms here in Woburn and uh, greater Woburn area, let's just say. What makes you guys different? The, the major thing that we see that, that differentiates us is, is the, the relationship with our clients. Mm -hmm. that we understand this is an ongoing relationship. We don't treat our clients like a single transaction. It's an ongoing relationship. We're here to, pr to protect them and to really care for their families. Yeah. Um, so we, we have to have that strong relationship there so they feel comfortable coming to us when they need to. And Certainly. Yeah. You know, and by, by seeing them every year, that it strengthens that relationship and we're in a better position, I think, to then help them if something happened or to better advise them on maybe th some things we need to change because of X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot that stems from the process we use in terms of learning about someone and sharing information with them and developing a plan reflective of that mm -hmm. that really makes uh, a better end result for them. That ongoing relationship mm -hmm. I've seen in my field and you guys may have seen in your field, no matter how much you do for fact finding and that relationship building, that next phone call, you're still gonna find something mm -hmm. new out that you didn't know before. Right. I didn't tell you that, I didn't share that with you. Right. So it's, right. uh, it's a constant process to be able to make sure that they're up to date, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, what are com some common situations that you both see? Um, I'll go through a couple. I mean, so I think you could be here all day if you yeah. went through it. Right? <laughs> so I think there's, uh, I'll, I can give you two. Yeah. One's kind of a common scenario we get, and then another is a common misconception we see. Okay. Um, I think one common scenario we get is a phone call where, um, from a couple where one spouse has fallen ill um, unexpectedly or um, suddenly, mm -hmm. and there's a, bit, there's a panic in terms of what this means because on the medical side, they're being advised that, you know, this person might need long-term care, and what do we do, how do we pay for it? And I think that's a, an unfortunate but very common scenario mm -hmm. that, that occurs. So those consultations um, are, are real productive in that we can kind of orient people and calm the situation down and help work them through. So that's, that's one scenario in, in our firm that we see quite a bit for mm -hmm. people that haven't <coughs> planned in advance, in advance, excuse me, that we have to encounter and work through. Mm -hmm. um, so on the, on the elder side, that's a, a real common scenario. Um, one misconception that I think we see almost daily, it seems, is the idea that when people do a will, they avoid probate. Uh, so Mark will kind of get into a state administration. We have a lot of people we sit with that come in saying they want a will, thinking it avoids the court system and we spend a lot of time uh, exploring why that isn't the case and what a will tr really is doing. And um, you know, we work through that and uh, we think help a lot of people uh, and, and fix that problem. Okay. Another, another problem that we see, we see it all the time, is people ha come in with an estate plan and say these are the, these are the documents we did, and a nice binder and has everything there. And they say, well, we have a trust, can you review it? Sure. When we review it, what, first question we ask is, this is great, what's in this trust? And they have no idea. And they say, well, what do you mean what's in the trust? And we say, what, what does the trust own? And we find out that it was never funded properly. There's nothing in it. So uh, all those not even the real estate. No. no, it's not about the documents. Right. No, it's, about the, the, it's about the having the yeah. plan and having the, the mm -hmm. assets titled properly mm -hmm. so that the, the plan will work. Mm -hmm. 
You see that too often, I'm sure, mm -hmm. all the time. Yep. We do a so lot of work fixing those. Yeah, we do. You know? And I think you know, kind of hit the nail on the head a few times there, but my next question was why is it so important to review and to mm -hmm. update these things? Um, because they might not have been properly funded. Right. Mm -hmm. they or, or they may not have been properly drafted. We've seen that. And they say to the client, Do you, this is what this trust says. Uh, and they say, well, that's not what I want. Well, <laughs> yeah. So that's why we review it. You know, after we draft it, just say, look, this is what we've we've prepared, and we meet the following year. This is this is what we're doing with this plan. Has anything changed? So they understand what's exact, what's in the what are, is in those documents. Mm -hmm. So that's very important. They understand what those documents, each document does, mm -hmm. and how it fits in with the entire plan. Each document is part of each of the entire plan. Mm -hmm. And I think a good example with why you need to review it is a family with young kids. You know, my oldest is six. You, know, you, you project out the best for your, your children and you know, we do a plan kind of with, with those goals in mind. Like, mm -hmm. okay, go to college and get a good job so everyone's got a good head on their shoulders. But as your kids grow older, that may not be the case. So at age 18, maybe, maybe a child's taken a different path than you hoped for. Well, mm -hmm. Leaving them their inheritance at, at age 20 Five might not make sense anymore. So, you know, people, kids grow up, uh, things change. Mm -hmm. And so a, a lot of people will start with the do-it-yourselfer mindset, which is not something you can do start to finish with estate planning or elderly law. But for people that have the wheels spinning upstairs and they want to kind of take a look at their own information or certain misconceptions and mistakes to truly genuinely avoid do you guys have any of those scenarios or tidbits that viewers might be able to take away from today's meeting before they give you a call and uh, gain a little bit of street smarts, let's say? Don't do it on your own. Don't do it on your Don't own. Don't do it on your Biggest own. Biggest tip. It's, <clears throat> there's too much at stake. Right. Uh, this, is, this is your family. Mm -hmm. uh, this is you're taking care of your family after your death. You want to have it done right. Mm -hmm. And you want to have the trust funded properly and mm -hmm. everything in place in the right manner. Mm -hmm. Don't, do, Don't do it yourself. Mm -hmm. And you, you can't believe everything you read online. I mean, <laughs> it's just a basic fact, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't do it. So there's good information out there, but mm -hmm. how it applies to you and what should apply to you, I think is hard to decipher that, on your own. It certainly can be, yeah. Lead, lead you down the wrong rabbit mm -hmm. hole, right? Yeah. Um, for somebody that hasn't reached out to somebody like yourself, what should they be looking for in a state planning attorney? Uh, what are the questions they should be asking in that consultation? What are your suggestions for the people that are almost so nervous that they are scared to make that first step. What are the questions they should ask to help them out? Well, I, think, go ahead, go ahead. I think some of the basic questions, just some of the things we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you recommend for me? What do you see as, as important? And some of the basics. Mm -hmm. I don't have a will, do I need one? And, and what are my options? Us, right. your options? Yeah. Allowing what, us to what, walk what options do I have? It's not, it's not a one-size-fits-all type, okay. type scenario. We, we want to make sure that our clients are making an informed decision. Mm -hmm. So we oftentimes say, this is your scenario with your family. These are the different options. Here's the pro and the con. Mm -hmm. So make sure you, you ask, what are my different planning options? Right. Okay. Yep. And I think just those, you know, some of the fundamentals, questions they're thinking of, you know, our initial consultations, it might be an hour, hour and a half, and it's, it's just to get to know people mm -hmm. and for them to get to know us as well and, you know, give us a chance to, to talk about the planning process and, uh, and what they should expect and, you know, give them an orientation as to what it's all about. So we try to make it relaxed and, and take the nervousness out of it because it's just an initial step to, to kind of feel things out. Okay. Interesting. So... But there's a lot of great information here today, and uh, I feel like I'm going to miss something because there's been so much good that's been happening. Do you guys feel free to recap? Is there anything that you'd like to share with those viewers out there in summary about your organization, some of those misconceptions as a whole, or just what would you like to leave the viewers with today? Uh, I think we should <clears throat> really, it's uh, again that estate planning is personal in nature. Mm -hmm. Uh, that everyone has a different family scenario and everyone has a different planning objective. And so make sure that, that uh, people call us and they sit down with us and we don't rush anyone out of the office. We want to have a nice conversation and understand their goals and objectives. 
Um, so give us a call. Uh, don't hesitate to give us a call. Uh, we're friendly. <laughs> we we uh, enjoy. We're, we both enjoy working with people. Um, that's the, the the best part of our job is is getting to know people and and and, um, and getting to know their families as well. Yeah, and I think too. I think you know, life happens and, and things are going to happen. So you can either address them as you think appropriate, or there's default rules that are going to apply to everybody. So I think my, my feeling on it is at least have the conversation. At least learn about it, understand your options and your choices, versus having something happen by default. That's fair. Well, gentlemen, we'll have to do an update again maybe in the spring. But it's great to have you guys on the show. Sounds I think good. it's very valuable Thank information. You if anyone has any questions, give you guys a shout. You'll take good care of them, I know. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thanks, guys. All right, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching today's show with Ken Simmons and Marco Schiavo. Now remember, we all have one life to live. Let's all try to do our part. I'm your host, Tyler Gates. Join us again next time for another episode of the Wolverine Spotlight.